Um, actually, any city councilors who are here, if you want to come up here, Shelly. <coughs> Sarah, do you want to come up? Where's Councilor Kim oh, up here? We're going to do a quick, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the show, and then we're going to do a Q&A, a few minute questions about where things are going. Uh, Mary Margaret, yeah, we should be careful. Yeah. I'm also a counselor. I'm a counselor. She's a counselor. Sean Brogan, she's a counselor. Okay, great. Uh, we had a few other counselors here, too, but they had to go home, like uh, Josh Cole and stuff. Anyway, oh, Hillary, come up. Hillary invested all the uh, research for this exhibit. <laughs> So thanks. Um, I just wanted to thank the people who supported the exhibit through the uh, Rocket Hub thing. They're the ones who got the first invitation for being here, and this wouldn't have happened uh, without you folks. I also want to share a really quick, funny story. So one of the points of the exhibit is that this space physically isn't really geared towards citizens walking in here and participating as citizens. Uh, for example, there was no one at reception here for most of the day, and my mom was here volunteering, helping me set up the exhibit, and people were coming in the front door and there was no one at reception, and they were going to my mom, <laughs> who was here volunteering for an exhibit about how inaccessible this building is, and she ended up helping, instead of helping me all day, she was helping people with their water bills and their utility bills. <laughs> and there she is right here. That's true. Yeah. 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 One person who was on the verge of tears, who was really distraught about the amount on her bill and her ability there was a language barrier, she didn't know what to do, this is City Hall, she was completely lost and she turned to my mother because she was here. Um, what a great example of how far we have to go. And the 36 recommendations in this exhibit try to address the fact that so many citizens don't feel engaged and even those who take that step to want to be engaged come all the way down to City Hall, even they don't know who to turn to except for my mom. So um, we have these 36 recommendations. I want to introduce first Councillor Paul Ainsley. He's the chair of a committee called the Government Management Committee. And most of these issues fall under his jurisdiction. And he's actually moved already out of the 36, about half of them. Uh, over 50 motions have already been passed. Uh, sorry, not passed, but uh, moved forward um, by Councillor Ainsley. So there is momentum. Year by some of these folks and others. There's been a lot of interest in some, in some of the issues. Uh, Shelly Carroll, in, in, in particular, has been really interested in the participatory budgeting process, and she went to a conference in New York about two months ago. So actually, well, I could talk for hours about this stuff, but all this stuff is there. Uh, I'd like to take questions from anyone about the exhibit, the process, the path forward, and I invite the counselors up, because if any of you have questions about how a particular item is moving forward, any of you could come to the mic. Oh, Councilor Lake is here too. Any of you could come to the mic and say, I'm going to champion this. I'm going to make this happen. So this is a great chance for you. I can't make it happen. I don't, there's 44 seats there and another seat at the, at the end. And um, they're the ones who decide how it goes. I can just throw ideas in pretty charts we're, we're, and stuff. Why we got called up? Anyway, uh, this is their chance to make you happy. That's what you want to go over there. Anyway, so any questions about the exhibit from anyone? And maybe just say your name if you want and, uh, and a question. And you should know that Mr. Himi Sayed is videotaping all of this. This is on the record. <laughs> is this a YouTube one? It's a YouTube one. <laughs> mom, any questions? <laughs> oh, my mom thinks I should introduce the councillors. I agree. I don't know the board numbers. Uh, this is City Councillor Paul Ainsley uh, from uh, Scarborough, far end of Scarborough, 43. This is uh, John Elvich, who's the direct, the direct. Director of Secretariat. Essentially, you've got the clerk who kind of runs the whole place, and uh, he's one of the highest positions within that department. And he's when the meetings are happening, there's a little group of Center people table in the right middle here. of the middle of the counselors <laughs> who run the whole thing. And he's, he's there. Anyways, uh, and John is working on uh, a few of these topics. In particular, he's been interested in uh, redesigning the public notices because it's John and his staff who have the unfortunate task of actually placing those terrible notices in the paper. And they would rather be placing, they would rather be placing better notices, but it's, yeah. it's not easy to do. A uh, quick story, we'll get, we'll get back to the line. The village of Pemberton in British Columbia has completely redesigned their public notices based on the recommendations in this exhibit. over there in the award that I gave to the mayor of Pemberton for moving forward on this. Uh, their entire city is, is about the population of the two towers of this building. <laughs> uh, probably less. It's a 
thousand people. <laughs> so um, they were able to do it easily because I think their entire staff body is like seven people. And their entire marketing communications department, her name is Jill Brooks Baker. And she, she redesigned the notice on her own. I don't even think she asked anyone. So uh, John is in the unfortunate position where he's in a city of two and a half million people, a huge bureaucracy, dealing with the province, dealing with the various um, uh, Folks within the city's bureaucracy who might have an opinion on this, like the solicitor, like the counselors who worry about the financial impact of having color notices versus black and white. But he's expressed to me that he wants to see this happen. He's trying to make it happen. He's trying to be someone who can move it forward through the bureaucracy. It won't happen in one month like Pembroke, uh, sorry, like uh, Pemberton. Uh, but if it does happen, it's going to be because of John. So I want to thank you for taking the lead on that. And if we have questions, particular interest in the participatory budgeting angle and as I said went to a conference in New York two months ago. It's the first national conference uh, in North America about particip participatory budgeting which has been huge in Latin America and has just started happening in North America in the last, what, four years? Starting with Chicago and then yep. New York. Yep. Councillor Sarah Doucette, congratulations on the new Hyde Park Playground. Everyone's very excited. Talk about citizen wow. engagement. left the URL off the booklet, it's, but it's easy, it's thefourthwall.ca. There is a link for proposals and then a link for this thing called the scorecard. And all 36 are listed, color-coded based on whether there's been any, uh, any, any movement or none or whether it's been implemented. One has been implemented. When this project launched six months ago, there was no Wi-Fi in City Hall. It was in the works. But we think that the exhibit maybe sped it up a little bit. Uh, there is Wi-Fi here now. It's not perfect. It's not open all the time, but it's here. Um, and half of the motions have been moved by Councillor Ainsley, and they're actually you can link to each one, click on it, and that takes you to his motion on the staff and the staff report if there's been one. Great, thank you. These are all lying around, by the way. There's, these are free. Take as many as you want. We printed five thousand of them. If you want some for your students or your colleagues or your your pet, whatever, let me know. <laughs> Is that a good answer? You got the great answer. Okay. Yeah, My question is, I'd like some insight on how City Hall works. Why is it so hard to make changes that to me seem really simple? You know, signage, brochures, you know, notice format. It seems like it should be snap, and I see that it isn't. And I'm wondering, why is it so hard? <laughs> <laughs> Because we live in a bureaucracy, it's an, and I don't. I won't say things are endless. It's just um, you know, it, it's not that easy to snap your fingers and have signs in a building that have heritage designations all over. Um, we have other processes we've gone through for Wi-Fi, for example. Um, took a while as we negotiated it our way through Rogers. Uh, actually, we're talking right now. We're negotiating with someone about uh, live streaming in the committee rooms, which I think is very important to me. Um, think we have to go in camera to talk about it? Yeah, we have to go in camera, which is a whole different ball game. Um, things are moving forward, certainly not always as quickly as I would like to see them uh, happen, but they are moving forward. There's, there's something else too, which is that there's always a more urgent issue take the, to take this week. None of you are thinking about this stuff this week because there's a really important transit vote coming up. That's what everyone's thinking about. That's what everyone's talking about. And if it wasn't transit, it would be Mr. Mammolini's homeless plan. If it wasn't that, it would be a Ferris wheel. Like, who knows? There's always something urgent that people are supporting or against, right? They're, we're always putting out fires. When will signage in the rotunda become the burning issue? So that's where you all come in. 
Uh, and that's where this exhibit comes in. So we're trying to put pressure using colorful charts and vibrancy and, 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 and some music and some food to try and at least you know, put this issue on the agenda. And a budget. And, and yeah. there are we need money to do these things too. There is a budget, right. But so. don't be shy about calling city councilors and complaining about why you can't find your way to the city council chamber because there is no sign. Or you need to go to committee room number two and you have no idea where it is. Um, because it happens more often than not that I'm walking through the lobby and I will find somebody that's kind of looking around just yesterday, um, you know, and it's a small thing, big thing for this gentleman, he couldn't even figure out where the public washrooms were, right? But I have people that actually can't find the council chambers when they come in this building. I don't blame right? them. The signage is terrible. And the washrooms are all hiding behind these weird hallways in the back. Or another thing that, that's a big deal for me, so I would like an office I would like an office of civic engagement in this hallway, in sorry, in this rotunda. You know, I think we used to have a gift shop over there across from the cafe on the square. I actually have civic engagement staff in this building. They're up on the ninth floor in the west tower. You go behind a glass door. If you want to get to them, you go up to that floor, you get off the elevator, you go to the phone on the desk, you call the number, you hope that they answer because they're only working part time. And their main job is not so much civic engagement with the public, it's civic engagement with staff to teach them how to engage the public. I would rather the, to have a civic engagement office right in the lobby here. You walk in the front door and boom, there it is. So. But when Councillor Ainsley recommended that in a motion, the staff report recommended it against it. So I mean these things, are, they're really hard to do, but I think we can keep pushing for it. Councillor Set. I have a little story about a sign. Everyone knows what an AED is. No. What? It's those machines where if someone's having a heart attack or something, you can bring them back to life. Defibrillator. Did you know we have three in this building? I didn't know where they were when I came, became a city councillor, so I actually looked for them. Because in my last job, I was in charge of looking after it. We have one right here by security. Only if you were leaving the building would you have seen the sign that we had an AED. So I spoke to security. It took them about three weeks to get permission to move that sign off a wall. And as you leave, you'll see it hanging now. So as you come in the building, you actually see where it is. Simple things like that. That annoyed me. But we got it changed. And I'm sorry, John, I didn't come on as permission. I just went and did it to security. Good old things. I have to talk about signs. Because I hate signs. I hate signs? OK. Well, I hate signs. <laughs> the city has a sign shop, a couple of them, and every time you look around, there's a new sign in a park. Don't do this, don't, don't do that, don't do this, don't, don't do that, put this here, put this here, no parking, don't park here at this hour, that hour, four and five and six, seven or eight signs. There's a song about that. <laughs> and I think we over sign things. Yes. We have two people at the front of this building, we have 24 hour security who know where everything is. And we have an information desk that should be just like a concierge desk. And I believe people should be talking to other people and they know where to go. I do have a little pet peeve about the wedding chamber and that people who are getting married actually can't figure out where they're going. So that would really bug me if it was my big day and I was coming in here. So I don't think we need big signs, wedding here, council there, all these signs. I think we need to have a way that funnels people to people that give them a little map, say here's where you go. It's pretty simple on paper. So I hate signs. I totally agree. But the problem is right now they're being funneled to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> there is no one at the reception desk. Yeah, she's gone. And, and, and when there is, you can watch a video online. It's on the homepage of the fourth wall .ca. We did this kind of hidden camera video with My City Lives where I go to the reception desk and I ask a whole bunch of questions like um, can you tell me how to start a residence group? Can you tell me how to run for city council? Do you have a ward map? Do you have a list of all the councillors? Um, do you have a list of the upcoming meetings? And the answer was pretty much either no, or like Paul said, yes, on, on, the, on the 13th floor behind a glass wall. So yeah, we either need signs or we need human beings. The mayor keeps talking about customer service. Well, let's get some customer service on. High school students that need uh, their uh, hours. Their, uh, yeah. To, to, they can be posted all over. Volunteer, volunteer, internship. They would and they get them into the city hall. 
Yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of idea. Uh, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick question for you guys. I just used the term earlier about in camera. I said to Paul, maybe this meeting has to go in camera. How many of you don't know what that means when a meeting goes in camera? Do you all know what it means? In secret. Wow. Well, you're all geeks then. Meeting nerds, meeting nerds. Anyways, I think, it's an, I think it's an example of alienating jargon that doesn't actually make much sense to most people. If someone comes to a meeting, they say, we're going in camera. Which actually means the opposite. It means now you turn your cameras off. There will be no cameras. We're going outside of the camera. Um, yeah, it means everyone has to leave the room. I'm sure there's a more accessible term. Yeah. Everyone else. Really? I've heard it. It's called a closed session. It's called a closed session. It's better. Evan Dean, question. Um, I just had a question about, uh, I see up here nice diversity of uh, counselors that range the political spectrum. Um, but my concern is like with so many things that happen today at City Hall, everything gets partisan one way or the other, left, right, you know. Um, can you talk a little bit about like about this exhibit, the fourth wall, and where how you think it plays in in terms from a partisan point of view? Sure. First of all, I wouldn't say that things necessarily always fall on a left right partisanship. A lot of people have described the shift over the last year as going from right to left people beating the mayor, I think it's gone from ideological based to evidence based. And it hasn't been a right to a left. It's been counselors from all across the spectrum looking at facts and data rather than just voting on the toll, which isn't a shift from right to left or left to right. This issue in particular, though, definitely isn't a left wing issue or a right wing issue. In fact, the one person on council who talks the most about customer service and about how the voters are supreme is Mayor Rod Ford. This is all right up his alley. So I don't think it's, it's a right-left issue, and I think you can see that here, and you can see the other support we've had. So I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't become a partisan issue. I agree that we have seen issues, um, perhaps this week, perhaps not, where partisanship plays a role in policy. Awesome. I don't think that will happen here. That won't happen here. It's not going to happen in this session. It might not even happen in this but, session at all. Oh. You know, just a, a quick couple of examples. Uh, we, the, the bag ban. That is the craziest looking vote I've ever seen. <laughs> Go into the minutes and look at who voted for what, and it's nutty. Uh, and what it says to you is an actual fact. What is going on up there, because there, there's a bit of a leadership void, I'm going to just name it, but because there's a bit of a leadership void from, from the one office, people are really looking at the issues, weighing in on the issues, making speeches on the issues. And if you are a media nerd and, and, and uh, you're focusing on that, uh, they need to write a story with a beginning and a middle and an end, so they've got to frame everything left or right. But in fact, if you become a, a web streamer and you start to listen to the sessions, you find that we're, we're now uh, creating coalitions around issues, and they don't divide along hard left and right lines anymore. Uh, most of us to get the things we want done for our city, the things we want done for our ward, are sort of branching out in all different directions. Uh, you'll see it in you see it in one city. Uh, that's going to be an exciting debate. You see it in the bag ban. I don't know if there's going to be a reopener or not, but that's certainly what's happening in the the sort of seminal issues that 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 end up coming to the fore in every council session in the last few months. And I think the fact that we're not on an obvious hard left-right line anymore is what's making this potential for fourth wall types of change. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask about instant runoff uh, voting. Um, sure. It does seem like really, really complex, even if it passes through. Is it, uh, has it come up before? Has it been defeated? And I guess maybe for the, the machine of government, I guess it would be even difficult even if it does pass. It really changes the game of how everything's done. Uh, even if it does pass, would it be, even be possible to implement for the next election? Okay, so those are questions about instant runoff voting. There's a panel there about a campaign called Rabbit. <laughs> Councilor Ains is wearing the Rabbit button right now. So instant runoff it's voting, I would say, <laughs> uh, it's not complicated at all. It's, um, it's a very simple system. And as far as voting reform goes, it's, it's actually a very minor change. It's not proportional representation. It doesn't change the war boundaries. It doesn't change um, how many councilors there are, etc. So it's essentially it's a ranked ballot. Instead of picking one person, you pick you rank your choices one, two, three, four. 
And then no one wins until we actually get 50%. You need a full majority to win. Just the way all of our leadership races work in Canada, no one gets 50%, the person with the least drops off. And the computer can retabulate your second choices because you've already marked it on the ring ballot. It's being used all across the US. Almost every American city uses runoffs to choose their mayor or their councillors. And they're shifting towards this instant runoff voting system. Is it possible to have for 2014? I hope so. It'll be a much more friendly election. The campaigning is more positive with runoffs. Most importantly, it gives more people a voice to run. Uh, without having runoffs, you end up with a lot of vote splitting, and more importantly, a fear of vote splitting. So for example, in 2014, there's a lot of talk, hypothetically, um, if someone wanted to defeat the mayor, uh, every, all, all the papers have said in their columns that if one person runs against the mayor, right now, they'd be likely to win. If two or three or four people ran, right now, they'd be likely to lose. And that creates an environment where you end up having less voter choice. Under a good voting system, let them all run. You should run. You should run. You should all run. John, you should run for mayor. Um, Mom, you should run. <laughs> Under the current system, none of you would be allowed to run because you'd all be accused of being a Ralph Nader. You would split the vote, you would split that. And it's not a right left thing. There were articles four years ago, three I guess, will Rob Ford have to drop out of the race if John Tory goes in? Because John was a bigger name. So Rob himself. Mayor Ford himself might have had to drop out of the race. So our current system pushes out new voices, which are often female, young, and visible minorities. And with runoffs, anyone can run. So I'm hoping we can do it for 2014. I think it's better for candidates and better for voters. And it's a small change that we're getting a lot of support from. I think you've all endorsed it. Well, I haven't asked you yet, but uh, it's not appropriate for you to give an opinion. My mom endorsed like it. And, uh, there you go. Good question. Please visit the website, rabbit.ca, and sign up for our newsletter. Hindi. Uh, rather than 2014, back to the present day, you made an observation that the outside walls of the two towers have no windows, and the windows are facing yes. the other tower. Just over the weekend, last few days, our art installation called Fresh Eyes for the 2015 games, which is Pan Am Days tomorrow. These eyes are new Canadians, new voters. Uh, what do you think about that? Because that's an act of civic engagement to bring new people into City Hall, and it's and it's right on the eve. Yeah, so Hemi's talking about an exhibit which you should, should take a look at. All of the councillors' windows on the south side have eyes on them. And it's about, it's called Fresh Eyes. I'm not going to speak to it because I'm not the, the curator. Devin Ostrom is. But it's, 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 I don't know, it's, it's about something wonderful. Who wants to try and explain it? It's about seeing the city through fresh eyes of immigrants who've come to Toronto. And it's on the councillors' windows, so yes. they're the ones who are actually That's looking through it. Well, not all. Yeah. Quarter. <laughs> um, it's up for a few weeks to so check it out. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, all the recommendations are great, but um, one problem when it comes to elections especially is that running actually costs a lot of money. Um, and I know Shelly talks about this sometimes, but um, the, uh, maybe something that we could possibly see in the future is actually changing the way how the refund of the... the rebate to a the rebate, Yeah, the sure, rebate to a grant. This is a thing being done in New York and I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, it's a quick thing. Dave's known about this for a long time, and it's hard to talk about two big changes, ranked and, and the, the grant program at the same time. Right now, we go out and we look for community members who've got 100 bucks, and we say, 18 months from now, you get $75 back. It's a win-win it's a situation. What happens in other jurisdictions, Mexico City uses it, uh, New York City's used it for, I think, five elections now, uh, and then a rebate that you get way down the line. Um, you go out and you ask for $25 donations. And you gather them together, and at certain key dates throughout the election year, you go into what's called the Campaign Finance Authority and say, here are all my $25 donations. And the candidate gets that $75 in the lump sum up front. Which allows you to go out and in a grassroots way, on the ground, with the bowl of thumb, with the real people that you know you really want to serve, that's where you're raising the money. So that's where your accountability builds from. It's not how many people out there can really give me 
750 because I want to do this quickly. How many people have got 2,000 right now because I'm running for mayor? You're, you're starting from the, the small amount and then you get the money from the campaign finance authority. It's the same amount of public money. It's the same amount that, that you're getting now going back out into the community in the form of a rebate. It's just doing it up front allows you to focus on those people and what it's done is meant a little bit of an increase in, in not only election participation, investment in the whole process, but but gradually over five elections turnout itself. I put in my twenty five dollars. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, Councilor Ainsley does a lot of tweeting, Shelley's on Twitter, the clerk is on Twitter, it's uh, it's what is it? Toronto Council, that's easy, Sarah's on, on Twitter. Um, we have a newsletter on the Rabbit page, and most importantly, we have sign up sheets around here on some of the tables. If you sign up for that, I'll send updates out about the fourth wall. If any of these motions come back to committee, you're allowed to speak for five minutes as a citizen on any issue, any time, at any committee meeting, but not at council. If you wait till council, you're too late. Most people don't know that. So if you wait till then, you'll, you won't have a chance to speak. But at the committee meetings, you can speak for five minutes. And if Paul or anyone else is moving motions, it's helpful for them if you come as a citizen um, and speak in favor of these ideas. So stay involved, keep in touch. Our emails are on the front page of the booklet. The website just went up three days ago. Check it out. Send your feedback to me by email and spread the word. And once again, thank you very much. And thanks to the people who came by today and helped out. Uh, ben was here. Um, my mom was here, Sean was here, um, and others, so um, and I'll just pass it back to Paul, and thanks to the councillors for showing up, and for John Elvis for being here. Thank you, and I just, there we go, and I just wanted to take a course. <laughs> oh, he's going to do an Elvis thing now. Oh, I, I just want to thank Dave. Um, <laughs> when, I was, when I was made chair of the Government Management Committee about two years ago, and um, I look after a lot of the cities, my committee looks after the city's assets, leases, contracts, the IT department, but one of the things that the mayor asked me to do was to make City Hall more open and transparent. And I'm a big user of social media, as Dave said, and so is Shelley, and, and Sarah, and John, a lot of the other councillors, Facebook, Twitter, um, but there's a lot more to that, and you know, we touched on some of the things, but um, you know, I was trying to get my head around what I wanted to do with government management to make it more open and transparent, and I was formulating some ideas about different things to engage people, um, and I met Dave, 2006 in the municipal election, we had some contact with each other and he called me up and he said, I've got this fourth wall exhibit going and I went in and I did my thing with the greens stickers and it's, you know, it's quite an amazing exhibit. I was really impressed with it and, but it really formalized a lot of things for me about where I wanted to go and where I thought City Hall should be going. So I just want to take a, a second to thank Dave uh, and everybody that's been involved in putting this together. I know that he sent out uh, tweets this afternoon and he was impressive volunteers. I uh, came in and helped to put this up and it was lovely mom for all her work. <laughs> Leading the way on civic engagement this afternoon at Civic City Hall, I want to thank you as well. And uh, if you haven't seen the exhibit yet, please do look at it. It's a wonderful exhibit. And uh, I think it's a great way to bring people together and uh, also start have people talking about what like, they'd like to see their uh, City Hall doing. It's great to hear that things are progressing in Milton. I was a little shocked uh, yesterday. I was reading an article about the city of Markham, uh, such things as they don't have an integrity commissioner, um, a number of um, people that they keep an eye on things when the politicians aren't doing their job, and uh, they actually had some ideas on the table and they actually ran out of time at a city council meeting, which I've never heard of a city council running out of time to debate something. But thing about Paul, before we had the fourth wall, we forgot, we met up at um, Mr. Greenjeans. Yes. And this is before the fourth wall existed. He had gotten a copy of Local Motion, which I published two years ago, about civic engagement, and he wanted to talk about it. He had read the entire book and had posted